Good day, students. Uh, welcome to part one of the Integrated Algebra Regions exam for June 2013. In this installment, we're going to be going over questions one through five. All right, so let's take a look at question one. Question one says, which expression represents five less than twice x? So um, when you're constructing this, um, a, an expression for this, a statement, you're going to be working backwards, basically. You don't write an expression as, as is, it is written in word form, okay? So you have five less than twice x. You're having uh, two operations here, a subtraction and then a doubling. You're doubling x or multiplying x by two. So when you want to write this, you, you're going to start from the back, okay, and work towards the front. So what you're going to do first is you're going to double x twice x, and then you're going to subtract 5 minus 5. So 5 less than twice x simply means that you follow your order of operations, you multiply x by 2 first, and then you subtract 5. Remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Um, multiplication and division goes first before you add and subtract. So you have to be really careful when you're converting a word form into, um, into a symbolic formulation. Um, into algebraic expressions so that you don't you don't mess it up, okay? All right, so the correct answer for question number one is option one. All right, let's move on to question two. Question two is, Gabriella has 20 quarters, 15 dimes, seven nickels, and eight pennies in a jar. After taking six quarters out of the jar, what will be the probability of randomly selecting a quarter from the coins left in the jar. So remember, probability of an event occurring is basically desired outcomes. We can say number of desired outcomes over the total. Okay? That's, that's a formula for probability. So um, these are the total number of coins that we have um, for, let's do a real quick accounting real, right here. For quarters, we have 20. For dimes, D, we have 15. Uh, for nickels, we have 7. And then for pennies, we have 8. Okay, if we add this all together, uh, 20 plus 15 is 35. And then 7 plus 8 is uh, 15. And if you add everything, you get, uh, let's see, 50. Okay, so this is the total number. But there was a change, though. There's a change to the problem. What happened here is that um, uh, six quarters were taken out. So that basically changes the problem for desired in total, okay? Because we were also focusing how many quarters we can get. So if six quarters were taken out, it changes the whole mix. We're going to have Q is now going to become uh, 20, minus, uh, 20 minus 6, which is... What is 20 minus 6? 14. Okay? And then the other ones stay the same. D is 15, N is 7, and P is still 8. Now, note that if you take 6 out of the number of quarters, the total number of, um, of um, coins in the jar is going to drop by 6, which is now good. So now you're going to have 44 left. Okay? All right. So now the question says, what is the probability that Gabriella will randomly, um, we'll get a quarter if she randomly selects a coin from that's what's left in the jar. So now we're going to apply our probability formula because we, we, we now know how many um, coins we're dealing with here. So probability of getting one quarter is basically number of quarters, number of quarters over our total number of coins. Okay, that's the probability of getting one quarter. All right, so, um, all right, so how many quarters do we have? We don't have um, 20 anymore. It's We took six out, so we're just left with 14. So probability of getting one quarter is going to be the total number of quarters we have, which is 14, uh, divided by the total number of coins left in the jar. Remember, there were 50 before, but we took six out. So we're now left with 44. So it's 14 out of 44. This is the probability of selecting, or randomly selecting uh, a quarter when you pull out a coin out of the 44 that's left. All right, so we can clearly see that our answer is option uh, number one.
Okay. All right. Well, let's move on to question three. Uh, question three, we have a line right here. It says, based on the line um, of best fit drawn below, which value could be expected for the data in June 2015? This is an example of positive correlation. So you see the points. Um, when you draw a line of best fit for the points, you have a line that uh, has a positive slope. When you go from left to right, the line is increasing. That, in, that indicates a positive, a positive correlation. Okay. So now that we already have a line of best fit, what um, is the value uh, for June 2015? So all you just have to do is make use of your ruler, trace June 2015 to your line of best fit. That's your input, and then you draw. A horizontal line to your value, um, which is going to be on the on the uh, y-axis. Okay, let's make sure I did this perfectly. Okay, right there. All right, so you can see it doesn't it doesn't hit um, 500 perfectly. Somewhere close to 500, but it's less than 500. Okay, so which of these answers is the best estimate for this output right here? Number that's uh, somewhere between 400 and 500, we can clearly see that option three is our best, best choice. Okay, so you see, so using this line of best fit, which is a positive correlation for this data set, the output for for June 2015 is going to be 480, which is also the value that we're looking for. All right, so that's that. All right, let's take a look at um, question number four. It says, if 0.5 comma k lies on the line represented by the equation 2x plus y equals 9, the value of k is, so if this point is on this line, that means that when we're plugging this point into this equation of this line, we're going to have a true statement, okay? So we have this 0.5 comma k. Uh, what does that tell us about the value of each one? We know that for um, an ordered pair. The first coordinate is x, 5, and the second coordinate is y, which is k, okay? So these points satisfy this equation. So if I plug in these values into this equation, I'll have a true statement, okay? So what I'm going to do is plug in these values into this equation right here. So the equation of the line is 2x plus y. This is the standard form of the equation of a line, and we have a point 5 comma k that, that satisfies it. So we're going to plug it in to times 5, which is the x-coordinate of the point, times plus k, which is the y-coordinate of the point, equals 9. So this should be a true statement. If I solve this resulting equation for k, that will tell me what the value of k is, okay? So 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus k equals 9. So to isolate k, we just simply subtract 10 from both sides. And then we have k equals negative 1. All right, so that's the value of k. Um, so we can see that our answer is option number three. Okay, now uh, let's uh, shift our attention to question five. Question five says that uh, a soda uh, container holds five and a half gallons of soda. How many ounces of soda does the container hold? So we're going to be doing a conversion here. We're going to be converting from gallons to ounces. So we are provided with a conversion chart. It shows us that we have to take two steps. To go from gallons to ounces, we have to, first of all, take the first step, which is from gallon to quarts. And then the second step will be from quarts to ounces. Okay? So um, how do we set this up? First of all, to convert, it's easier to work with improper fractions so we can reduce. So five and a half. Uh, as an improper fraction is going to be 2 times 5 plus 1, uh, which is 11 over 2 gallons, all right? Okay, so we want to change 11 over 2 gallons to ounces. So this is how I'm going to set it up. I'm going to start with 11 over 2, and I'm going to put gallons. All right, so this is how you do it. We're going to take two steps. So since there are two steps, we're going to have two fractions. First fraction with the unit and then another uh, fraction uh, with the unit. Okay, so now uh, we're gonna go from gallons to quarts. I want the gallons to cancel, I don't wanna be left with quarts. So 
Uh, if I want the gallons to cancel out, I'm going to put the gallons on the bottom. And then I'm going to put the parts on the top. Okay. Guess what? This first step is going to change, convert from gallons to parts if I have the right uh, numbers here, conversion factor. Okay. So now from quart, what do I want to go? I want to go from quarts to ounces. So I want the quarts to cancel out in the second multiplication. So I want, I want to have a uh, quart on the bottom and ounces on the top. Okay. So this is basically how you set it up. So you notice these gallons cancel out, the quarts cancel out, and then they will have ounces, all right? So how do you populate this uh, fraction that I just introduced? Uh, so how you do it is you have one gallon equals four quarts, so one gallon, one gallon equals four quarts, okay? So this is the first conversion factor. If I work this piece out, it changes it from gallons to quarts. The next conversion factor, one quart is 32 ounces. Okay, all right, so uh, this is the first conversion factor, multiply by 4, and then the next one multiply by 32 over 1. All right, so let me show you what I was saying concerning the units. Check this out. See the gallons? This gallon and this gallon cancels out. And you look at the quarts, this quart and this quart cancels out. What are you left with? Ounces. Okay, so whichever way you set it up, the only unit that should be left should be your targeted units, which is ounces. All right, so let's say you, you switch this around. The failure for cancellation to happen will tell you that your setup is wrong. Okay, so you want ounces on top, not at the bottom, you want it on top. Okay, all right, so this is what we want. So now, if we just carry out the computation of the arithmetic here, our final result should tell us the number of ounces that are in five and a half uh, gallons. All right, so let's see what can we do here. Two goes into itself once, two goes here twice. So 11 times 2 times uh, 32 will give us the answer. So let's do 2 times 32 first. We have 11 times 64. And we can just use a multiplication trick, 64 and then 64. Uh, and then 4, 0, 7, 704. Okay? This is how I, I like to multiply. You can use, always use your calculator. So your answer is 704. Okay, so there goes your final result. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. You can feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here so you can get uh, the next installments to this review series. Uh, and also post a comment to let me know what you think about this clip. More clips can be found on myvgotserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.